property please. We have to supply of the What the supply of the I said, it is the number of workers who have made themselves available for job at a given wage rate. So the supply of labor is always an, up, an upward flow. Why is it an upward flow? It's an upward flow because the more the wage rate increases, the more the people are willing to work. Do you understand? The more the wage rate, the higher the wage rate, the higher the number of workers willing and able to work. Is it clear? So, look at the graph here. This is the supply curve, the labor supply curve. At W1, the number of workers available is at N1. But as the wage rate increases from W1 to W2, the number of workers willing to work extends or expands towards N2. Do we understand? So, the higher the wage rate, the higher the number of workers available for job. That's why we said the supply curve is what? Upward. Is it clear? So I said the above supply curve of labor is upward still. An increase in the wage rate from W1 to W2 increases the number of workers willing to work from N1 to N2 because workers are attractive. They are attracted to higher wages. It is when the wage is high that people are like, they want to work. So workers are always attracted to wages that are high. That's why the number of workers will expand or extend from N1 to N2. Is it clear? So, as wage, as wage rate increases, the number of hours work, workers work may reduce, leading towards a backward leading supply, supply of labor. So, as your wage rate increases, then you have, as an employee, as an employee you, now, you start having more money. At that point in time, you think of reducing or relaxing your work rate. Yes or no? When you have been making a lot of money, so you start thinking of how to relax, to, uh, to have you know, some leisure. Do you understand? So at that point in time, we call it what, it's what we call backward bending. So look at the graph here. At the wage rate of W1, at W1, it is number of hours work is for H1. When it increases to W2, the number of work, work hours increases from H1 to what? H2. H2. Do you understand? So that's at equilibrium. But at a, it's going to be at the stage because the number of hours, look at it, the way it has expanded, it has increased so much, right? So if the wage rate increases from W2 to W3, that means now they are working so they are, the wage rate has increased from W2 to W3. What will happen? At that point in time, workers will be willing to work less hours. Do you get it? Because the wage rate has increased. So because the wage rate has increased from W2 to W3, the number of hours worked will fall from H2 to H3. That's what we call backward blending. blending. Why? Because at this point in time, they can work, they can work less to get more. Do we get it? They work less to get what? To get more. Unlike when they are working more to get a W2. But H3, it is less work, less hours of work, I agree. Which is better than at W2. That's what we call bad, backward bending. Do you understand? Yes. Do we get it? Yes. At the initial stage, workers are trying to work based on because the, the number of the higher the number of hours they spend at work, the higher the amount of money they will make. But when the wage rate increases from W2 to W3, it will lead to what we call backward bending, supply cost. Because at that point in time, they want to work less hour, less hour. To meet up with the equilibrium here, the equilibrium is at H3. So that means it has to go back. It has to reduce in the number of work they do to meet up with W3. This is the number of hours worked. So to meet up H3, what happens? They have to reduce the number of work they do. And at that point in time, their wage rate has increased from W2 to W3. Do we understand? This is demand or supply of labor. Supply of labor again is what the number of workers available, making themselves available for a job. The supply curve is always an upward slope 
curve. Why is it an upward slope curve? It's an upward slope curve because it is based on the wage rate. Workers, employees are attracted to higher wage rates. So it is when the wage rate is high, workers are willing to work. So W1 to W2 will increase work or expand the number of workers from N1 to N2 because workers are attracted to higher wages. But there's going to be a stage at W3 when at that time, workers will be willing to have layer. They want to relax. Because at that point in time, the amount of money they will make will be more when they work less. Do you understand? Nobody wants to work more when he knows that when, when he works less, he's going to get more than when he used to work more. So at this point in time, at H3, we are working less hours and we are getting more pay. Do we understand? So in this situation, we call it what? Backward bending supply of labor curve. Going backward. Is it clear? Do we understand this situation now? At this situation, the work rate is less. The wage rate is? The work rate is what? The wage rate is? What do we call it? Backward bending supply of labor curve. And supply of labor means to their wage. wage. So, because we have agreed as an, as an employer to pay these wage rates, and the workers are available at the same wage rate, then there's equilibrium. That's how we say it is what an agreement between the demand for labor and the supply of labor based on the wage that has to be paid to workers. I think that's clear. Then we we'll go to differences in earnings. When we talk about differences in earnings, we're talking about what makes certain professions get more pay than other professions, like the doctors and the waiters. Why are the doctors getting more pay than the waiters? So this is what we're going to explain here. So look at this graph. This is the difference in the difference in equilibrium wage rates of waiters and doctors. So based on this graph, let's check on this is for doctor and this is for waiters. The supply for waiters here, if, the, if there is an increase in the demand for let's say if there's an increase in the demand for waiters from DL1 to DL2, the quantity supplied will increase from W1 to W2, which is elastic, because there's an increase between them. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Assumption that there's an increase in, what, in the demand for waiters at DL1 to DL2. There's an increase in the demand for waiters. If there's an increase in demand for waiters, the quantity supplied of waiters will increase at W1 to W2. Why? Because at this point in time, waiters don't need more skills to accumulate before they become waiters. Yes or no? Yes. So, waiters are easily turned over than any other profession because you don't need to go to universities to become a waiter. Yes or no? Yes. So, if there is an increase in the demand for waiters from DL1 to ELDL, that means assumption. An increase in the demand for waiters at DL1 to DL2 will increase the quantity supplied, will increase the, the more worker, the more workers needed can be supplied as soon as possible. Do we understand? So at this point in time, it does not mean that the wage rates can increase. Look at the wage rates for waiters at W1 to W2. The wage rates at W1 to W2. It's not that much to, w, to the number of workers that can be supplied at that point in time. It's elastic. Look at it. It's elastic. Do you understand what I'm saying here? The number of workers that will be made available is more than the wage rate that is available for them. Why? Because at any point in time, waiters are not are not qualified. Uh, they are not qualified candidates. You don't need any qualification to become a waiter. Do we understand? Yes. So if there's an increase in the demand for waiters, the quantity supplied will increase 
but it does not mean the wage rate will increase. Look at the wage rate here. It's not increasing the same rate at which the demand is increasing. And remember that when the demand for labor increases, the wage rate must what? Increase. But not for waiters. Waiters can be anyone. You don't need special skills to become a waiter. Do we get it? Yeah. Good. So, here we said what? An increase in the demand for waiters at DL1 to DL2 will increase the quantity supply from W1 to W2 at a minimum wage rate. Can I help this side that? Needed to become. <coughs> An increase in the quantity demanded of doctors from DL1 to DL2. What happens afterwards? Elastic. This is elastic. Do we get it? Yeah. Why? Because to become a doctor involves special skills, education, qualification. Doctors are not something you can just easily see, unlike waiters. Then I look at the increment in salary now. The increment between these and this, is it the same? No. So there's an increment in salary, but as a result, despite that, the quantity supplied is less, is inelastic. Because the supply for labor at this point in time is not what could happen within a short period of time. Do we get it? Yes. For waiters, the supply of waiters could happen within a short period of time. Yes. Get it, okay? I will say it again. This is the supply, the quantity supply of waiters, this is the quantity supply of doctors. Yes. But with, there's an assumption that there's an increase in the quantity, there's an increase in the demand for labor from D1 to DL1 to DL2. So Employers need more workers, they need more with us, they need more doctors. So, based on the graph here, the quantity supplied of workers, through, that means the quantity supplied of waiters, is elastic. Why? Because waiters can be seen or gotten at a short period of time. But the quantity supplied of doctors is inelastic because doctors are not what we can get within a short period of time. Because to become a doctor, you need more qualification, you need more education. To become a waiter, you need less qualification and less education. <coughs> so, waiters can easily turn up within a short period of time. Doctors are not easily turned up in a short period of time. So, and even in the quantity demanded of waiters from DL1 to DL2 will increase the quantity supply, the percentage quantity supply of waiters from W1 to W2. But based on what we see here, it is elastic from what we just said, because waiters are easily seen. But an increase in the quantity demanded of doctors from DL1 to DL2 will also increase the supply of doctors from D1 to D2, but inelastic, because we won't be able to see doctors at the way we're going to see waiters. Do we get it? So here, the, turn, the turnaround time to get doctors is lesser than the turnaround time to get waiters. Mm -hmm. That's why that there is an increase in the wage rate from D1, WD1 to WD2. Look at the rates from here to here. A very high wage. But that does not increase the quantity supply of doctors. But remember that the higher the wage rate, the higher the quantity supply of workers. But not just all workers. The higher the wage rate, there are some workers that you can't get easily, like doctors, special skilled workers. You can't get them easily. Even if the price or the wage rate has increased for their profession, you might not still find them. That is the difference in the difference between waiters and doctors here. There is an increase. But that's why there is an increase and there's an increase in the wage rates. Look at the difference in their wage rates. But still, doctors is what? Inelastic. Do we get it? There's an increase in wages. We should attract workers. But these are, where are the workers? 
the supply of the supply of what doctors is less than the demand for doctors. But here, the supply of work of waiters is more than the demand for waiters. That is why it is elastic, and that is why this one is what inelastic. Do we get it? So the second analysis. So look at what I wrote here. I said, assumption that an increase in the demand for waiter for, from uh, DL1 to DL2 will increase the quantity supplied from W1 to W2, which is elastic because within a short period of supply increase, within a short period of time, we can find waiters. So at a lower at a lower wage rate of WW1 to WW2, there is a wage rate increase still because it is. A, an increase in demand, there will definitely be an increase in the wage rate. But the supply will still be more than the demand. The supply is more than the demand. So there's an elastic. <laughs> elastic. <laughs> so, because it's still there to become the waiter, it's not too fresh. But if there's an increase in the demand for doctors from DL1 to DL2, there will be an increase in the percentage change in the quantity supplied of doctors from D1 to D2 in elastic. Because doctors need more skills and qualifications which might not be gotten within a short period of time. Though, the wage rate will be higher than that of the wage rate of the waiter. Look at the wage rate of the waiter, it ends here. Even the first wage rate of the doctors is more than the second wage rate of the, of the waiters. <laughs> so the waiters are getting, uh, the doctors are getting higher wage rates, double that of the waiters. But that does not increase the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied of waiters. Uh, of doctors. Do we understand? So this will show you that doctors will earn more than who? Waiters. Do we get it? So this analysis is showing you that what? Doctors will earn more than waiters.